Good morning, Wanderer. We have officially been in Barcelona for an entire month. And since we've been here, we've had a lot of time to think about, well, a lot of things. And in today's video, we're gonna cover those things. So stay tuned. But first, we're gonna get a run in, and then of course, some coffee. Technically, we've already got two and a half miles in. Baby Dash is doing his normal race pace. So you see, when we first left for Spain, one of the things we were seriously contemplating is what to do with our rig. We love the Airstream, but we feel like it's time for a change. So we'll talk a little bit more about that too. All right, run completed. Do you do, D? I did great. I mean, uh, trying on a new pair of shoes. Fancy. It's gonna be my race day shoes. It's important to get a run in. Uh, they're brand new. And um, I finished my last mile at uh, 6.45. So that's pretty good. I'm getting faster, which is the goal. So I qualify for Boston. When he says 6.45, yes. He means six minutes and 45 seconds. That's amazing and totally insane. Guess who's still passed out? Baby Dash. Sweet thing. Okay, that's a school. Okay, there we go. Oh. Oh. Yes, please. One of the things that we have learned while being here in Spain is that when we go back to the States, we are going to be so spoiled on food. Food here is just so freaking amazing. I think one of my favorite things is that you don't really have to go far to find good food. There's literally good food in almost every single corner. I mean, it's very easy to collect a series of like favorite restaurants here because they have a lot of different varieties. And they're just all so darn good. This is where we go. Take a right, take a right. Ooh, look how pretty this one is. That's pretty cool. Some help, D? Yeah, I thought it was an electric door, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this place is so freaking incredible. Oh my gosh, look at these little guys. These are new. They're so cute. A rhino. Oh my gosh. A bunny. A lion and a monkey. <laughs> Those are insanity level cute. What do you think, dude? Oh, say, mommy, I just want the croissants. I know that the croissants here are amazing. <laughs> are you ready for croissants? <laughs> yeah? Are you waving? Yeah. Ooh, um, I think this is a Mars Capone. 
we've mentioned this in a previous video, world class. Like literally they have a school dedicated to baking here. So that should tell you how excellent this is. It's almost worth a trip to Barcelona just for this. Just to eat it. Oh, show us how fluffy it is inside. Here's the best part. I mean, look at this. It's so flaky. You can see it kind of falling apart. I mean, this is insanely good. <laughs> okay, so tell me, Dee, what have you been learning while we're here in Barcelona about what you want to do with our travels? Here's something very, very important that we've learned. Years ago, before we had the Airstream, we traveled the world with two suitcases and two backpacks. Now with Dash, we have a little bit more than that, but the reality is, Yeah, Dash? The reality is he wants some of that croissant. The He's reality. coming out of there for it. <laughs> okay, the reality is. The reality is we've realized that we don't really need that much stuff. And I think that you kind of expand to the space you're in. So we had a 30 foot airstream. When we first moved in, we were like, there's so much space. And then, you know, tack on two years and we're like, there's no more space, you know? Um, so I think it's really a lesson in, in, for us, in minimalism, because we need to go back and we need to start to think about how we can minimize what we have to make the most effective use of the space that we have. Now we've done that with the organizational video and, and CC with Lily's organizing did an incredible job in organizing it. But again, it's something you have to keep top of mind, you know, every not every day but at least every once every quarter and just reevaluate your life and say what am i using what am i not using what can i get rid of and go from there where are you going dash dash buddy how are you liking that is that good oh yes oh that's so good <laughs> okay how about so you? my croissant is raspberry and truthfully i like the mascarpone one that's one supposedly they're known for but raspberry croissants are my favorite thing in the whole wide world the only other place i've ever had one was rome and so when we found out that they had them here i was like beyond excited but look at that it has literally incredible raspberry preserves in here so not mad about this happy that i ran five miles so i could eat this but as far as the minimalism thing goes, I agree with Daniel. I feel like that's the number one thing that this trip has reminded us. That we love living a minimalistic life. We literally, we brought those two international suitcases with us. We brought one slightly larger suitcase. Oh, hold on. Oh, Dash is standing up there. I think he wants his, uh, <laughs> he's standing up in the stroller. I think he wants his cut. Mm. Right, Dash, you want a cut? Little man, you're making me nervous. <laughs> you dress him into the raspberry preserves, dude? <laughs> no. No, not a fan of raspberry. <laughs> uh, uh, no, he's not. That's it, interesting. It's a little tart. Um, That's like the first thing he hasn't liked. <laughs> like legitimately. Are you sure, dude? It's so good. Yeah, he's not doing it. It's not only about loving a minimalistic lifestyle, it's that it seems like when we have less stuff, it just feels like less baggage. When you do any kind of research on minimalism, they almost always talk about how every little thing that you own, owns a little part of you. And I agree with that statement so much. I feel like since we've been here and we've had less stuff, that it feels like we have more free time. It feels like there's more joy in that. Um, and because of that, I do not want to forget that. And I want that to be more of what we're thinking about when we're looking like at the next phase of whatever our travel lifestyle looks like. Oh my goodness, we're covered in Oh, and look at the stroller it is uh -oh. too. It's supposed to be a food-free zone. 
Yeah, I think we failed on that part there. Parenting fail? Yeah. Oh my goodness, there's tons of flakes. Another thing that we've had time to think about is, well, we've been away from the Airstream now for a month, and we absolutely love, love, love the RV lifestyle. And there's a part of us that can't wait to get back to it. The one thing that we have thought about is how we've utilized the RV over the past two and a half years. And it's become a reflective moment for us. I think that one of the things that we know we need to do a better job of is um, incorporating more of the outdoor space and living more in the outdoors. I think that there are days where we honestly never leave the Airstream. Um, it's just so comfortable. I mean, we've talked about this before. It's kind of like having like a New York City apartment. Um, you have everything you need inside a 30 foot Airstream. Um, and because of that, you don't always get outside. And that's kind of why you camp to begin with. And you have all these amazing views and scenery and you want to you know, engage with nature. And um, it's very easy to settle in to your day to day life inside you know sort of this luxurious rv so that's something that we're cognizant of we get back we want to incorporate more of the outdoor space into how we live oh you've got a friend with you look at that <laughs> hello puppy <laughs> this is what happens when you have that much croissant right? it's a puppy friendly environment look at that tail <laughs> hi dude let's be friends Hey little man, what's up dude? <laughs> also to that exact point, I think it's also that we really loved walking here. When you come to Europe, it is really um, part of the experience that you can just walk around. It's a, like Barcelona is an insanely walking friendly city. And like Daniel said, sometimes it's not even that we don't get outside. We walk less than a couple hundred steps if we do not go for a run. And we want to be more active. We both love being active and it feels like we've lost that a little bit in RV life recently. I completely agree with you. I mean, le legitimately there are days where the only exercise we get is running and that's it um, back in the States. And we need to do a better job of just getting out there and and exploring more. I mean, at the, at the core of what we were trying to accomplish here is you know, we were trying to uh, inspire everybody to do the exact same thing, to get out and to explore locally. And while we do a lot of the time, we could definitely do a better job of it. So that's something that we're definitely, again, cognizant of that we need to work on when we get back to the States. What have you learned about being a travel baby dash? What have you learned, dude? One more thing I really, really thought about definitely want to this is just we're just freestyling here i definitely want to do more boondocking um i think some of my favorite camping experiences were like sedona where we were boondocking and you'd wake up and you see these like beautiful vibrant red sunsets over the mountain range i mean those images will be burned to my brain until the day i die so having more of those experiences that that quote it's uh it's not the number of breaths you take it's the number of breaths that take your moments your moments that take your breath away or something like that you know but that those are those moments that sort of take your breath away um so i think getting out away from some of the more popular campgrounds um and getting out into nature is definitely going to be a goal of ours as well i think you hit the nail on the head with the campground <coughs> One of the things that is just like mind blowing to me about our experience here in Barcelona is that honestly, we're saving money living here compared to living in campgrounds lately. Now, granted, since we've had Baby Dash, we've been staying in full hookups, more of what I would like call campground resorts than we used to, but they're all expensive. And sometimes we're paying in the upwards of 100 to $150 a night for a campground. And they are nice, but at the end of the day, you're like right on top of your neighbor. And here we have our own flat, which has a washer and dryer, which I am not going to deny. I'm absolutely, well, technically not a dryer. It has a washer and I love that. It also has a dishwasher and that has been game changer. But you're sitting on top of your neighbor 
and our flat here in Barcelona is literally cheaper per night than a lot of the campground resorts that we have been to. And so I'm so with Daniel. It just seems like we want to do more of the camping style that we did when we first started, which had more boondocking incorporated into it, more Harvest Host, which we love, um, and fewer big resort style campgrounds because not only are they expensive, it just seems like the value is not there. Okay, so with all of that said, Dee, yeah. what do you think about changing our rig? At this point, everything is still on the table because we have yet to make a final decision. But just to lay some groundwork here, here are the current options. Class A, Class B, Class C, towable, fifth wheel, remodeling, the current Airstream. Um, did I cover absolutely every option? Literally, that's, like, that's, <laughs> that's every option on the entire planet yeah, for RV well, life. very open-minded, so, you know, basically, everything's on the table. Okay, that is absolutely not true. So there are a couple things we know. I don't think we're gonna go with a class A because at this point, although they are beautiful and they definitely, a lot of them come with the washer dryer, they come with the dishwasher stuff. Um, they don't have the clearance for the kind of boondocking that we wanna do. And it just seems like a lot of new rig to learn. So then the other thing that we definitely know, if we're gonna go the direction of another towable, we are more interested in a fifth wheel than a travel trailer. And that's because A, it would give us more storage, but B, if we're gonna go with another travel trailer, at that point we feel like we should just remodel our Airstream and make it work for us because, well, our travel trailer is pretty awesome. One huge advantage that we have now that we didn't have a year ago, even 10 months ago, is that Dash can go on hikes with us. Right, Dash? Even though we've been taking baby Dash on hikes since he was like, gosh, I feel like, what, six weeks old? Um, now he's older and now he enjoys it so much more. So incorporating more of those hiking type environments at state parks and national parks. Right, buddy? You wanna go to more state parks and national parks? That is definitely, we have a national park pass and we have definitely not put enough miles on that thing. So that's gonna be on our list for sure because they're some of the most beautiful places in the entire U.S. and we need to see more of them. Well, we have more of that planned this summer anyway. We have huge plans. We're going to the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, which is going to be amazing. We're gonna bring you all along for that. We are going to Wyoming and we're gonna visit Yellowstone, which has been on my list for, gosh, I mean, honestly, Yellowstone's been on my list since I was a kid. Um, I was a huge Angel Adam fan. He's a black and white photographer. Not sure if you're familiar with Angel Adams, but he took a lot of photography there at Yellowstone, and some of my favorite shots are from there. <laughs> and after that, I really got a lot of interest in the law warfare, too. So, do you have any favorite to do with me? The law warfare? I think he's trying to tell me to shut up, but I'm talking too much. I will say though, when it comes to our rig, one of the things that when we got here almost immediately, I remembered how much I enjoy the challenge of something new. And it's been almost three years since we have been in Europe. So being here, experiencing a new place where they don't always speak English, you know, you're working on your Spanish on a daily basis and there's constantly something new to learn. I really miss that. We had that experience when we first got the Airstream because we had literally never stayed the night in an RV in our lives. And so now that we've been doing it though for two and a half years, like we're good at it. Uh, if you've been following along with our channel for a long time, you know how bad we were at RV life when we started because we are not the kind of people who read a manual for anything. Um, so I feel like I want a new challenge no matter what we do with RV life. And because of that, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, 
90% ready to swap our rig, even though I love the Airstream. What do you think about that Dash and Daddy? Um, I think that I think that it would be sad to get rid of our current Airstream, but... Why would it be sad? Well, because, you know, Dash is born there and we've done a lot of upgrades to it to get it like in tip-top shape. I mean, it is like literally the best Airstream. Um, it's back when they had like the, the blackout curtains and all this other stuff that they don't use anymore. 40 pound propane tanks, that's the minutia stuff. The reality is, if we did sell it, it'd be like, I feel like we'd have to like screen the buyers to make sure it was going to a proper home. <laughs> <laughs> You're that fond of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's, um, yeah, I'm definitely fond of our Airstream. So uh, whoever we sold it to would have to like, uh, there had to be some criteria in place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was where we brought Dash home to. It's true. We have like, we've custom designed graphics. We've got, I mean, like there's a lot of really cool things that we've done to it. So, um, yeah. I think someone wants its socks off. Yeah. <laughs> Much better, right, Happiness dude? is going sock free. Final closing thoughts. If you followed our adventures at the Tampa RV Show, we were able to tour so many different rigs. Everything from Class A, B, C, Tobles, Fifth Wheels, and everything in between. Um, there are a few that we toured that are very high up in the list. So if you think you know which of those rigs that we toured during the Tampa RV show would be high up on our list, comment down below and we'll see how accurate you are. Because I mean, we're real serious at this point about changing our rig. We are, we are. Yes. And we're having some conversations. We're having some serious conversations. So, yeah. There's a lot of things on the table, a lot of things. But if you know, if you think you know which rigs we absolutely love the most from the Tampa RV show, I wanna hear your thoughts. And to make this even more interesting, if I had my way, we would be changing our rig as soon as we get back from Spain, which is in April. So when we say serious conversations, we're uh, pretty serious about serious conversations. I mean, for Dash, happiness is just a raspberry croissant away. <laughs> right, Dash? Are you excited about the idea of having a new house, dude? Yeah. Say, I'm mostly just excited about toes and toes. sleep. <laughs> okay, D, but. What do our friends need to do if they haven't already this week? If you have not already, make sure you're subscribed. And while you're at it, ring that little bell next to the subscribe button because that'll notify you when our new video comes out, which is tomorrow because we're shooting daily awesome vlogs and we have tons of amazing, amazing RV related content and some exciting news that we can't share quite yet coming up. So you don't want to miss that. But till next time, friend, make sure you wander local. It's good for the soul. See you tomorrow, friend.